Thank you tonight for yes. bringing your people together. We give you the glory and the honor, the adoration and the worship. Thank you. Anoint our ears. Anoint my vocal cords. Anoint us, O oh God. That in all things, your name will be exalted. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Now, last time we started with tongues, the importance of tongues, and I got a couple of... Uh, um, questions on text, so I'm going to try to address it. And some of the uh, um, issues, this number one is how, why is it that when we get born again, the Holy Spirit is not indwelling us? Why do we need another uh, experience? All right, now let me explain this. You cannot be born again without the Holy Spirit. You cannot. The Holy Spirit is the agency that brings salvation, convicts, cleanses us when we apply the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is the, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. The Bible says that in John 3. Born of water of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the one that sanctifies and uh, purifies us. Then we become born again. Now, after we are born again, we need a subsequent experience. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Sister Terry, read Acts 1, 8. Acts 1, 8. Okay, um, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my wit. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Okay. Now, Jesus was not speaking to unbelievers; he was speaking to his disciples. Now, actually. Now he told them you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you become witnesses. That is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power to witness. Now, before I go to Acts 2, I want you to go to Acts chapter 19, start there, Acts chapter 19. Just read from verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Okay, okay. Now, you see the trend of thought now. These were disciples made followers of Jesus. So they were already born again. And then when they were confronted, well, for lack of a better word, they were asked, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Go on now, started. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands, his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Okay, you see that? You see the trend? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you became a Christian? They were disciples already. They said, no. We not even had anything about the Holy Ghost, only the baptism of John. And they made sure that to tell them about Christ. John came, John was the forerunner to prepare the way. And they got again baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he laid hands on them and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. And how do we know they were baptized with the Holy Ghost? I tell you, read that verse again. When they laid hands on them, what happened? They spake with tongues and prophesied. They spake with tongues. That is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. These were not unbelievers. These were not, they, oh, the, the Apostle Paul didn't say, hey, you have all the Holy Ghost you need. 
since you're already born again, as many Baptists preach, you have all the Holy Ghost you need. No, no. We need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And that is the evidence there. That shows you example. This where it says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you believed, they were believers. They said, no, we, we have. And there are so many. Why? Because even today I was reading on some things that a lot of uh, pastors throwing confusion on this issue. So I wanted to make it clear, plus the text messages I got, to make it clear that we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's an experience beyond salvation. And when we get baptized, we speak in tongues as the evidence. All right? Started to go to Acts chapter 2. Just read the, read the first couple of verses. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon, upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. You see that? On the day of Pentecost, they had a full explosion of the Holy Spirit of God. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you shall speak in tongues. Now, let me just be clear. You don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven. But without that experience, you're going to struggle more than people who pray in tongues. That's just life. Because your spiritual batteries will be charged. We're going to look at it again. And there will be, it's kind of like going to school. You do an online class and you're not very disciplined sometimes. It's going to be difficult. As opposed to just going, sitting in front of a classroom and getting the whole stuff. It's easier. You see? It's easier to even do degree on your own as opposed to having a professor or somebody help you and guide you. That's what the Holy Spirit is. We need him. We need the mm -hmm. baptism. We need him for power. We need him to sustain us. We need him to go through obstacles. We need him for God. We need our spiritual batteries charged all the time. And we can't have that done all the time unless we pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. And the Bible, the Bible tells us that. That when we pray in tongues, you are, you are edified. So I, I was listening to it just before I came on here, just to make sure that I, a, a, a very well-respected uh, man of God. It doesn't mean you're not a Christian. It doesn't mean you're not a man of God. It doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. No, it means that, you know, you're just missing out on one of the most powerful benefits. Now, let me say this. Research and studies show this, that Pentecostal ministries, in general, win more souls than non-Pentecostals. I mean, that's, that's just the, why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The evidence of speaking in tongues. We believe in that. We believe in healing. We believe in casting out demons. We believe that Jesus Christ did not take all the power with him. And then you go to the mission field. Are you kidding me? You see a, a, a lady in Kenya who said to me, I was in a bus riding. And I, I saw a man. The man asked me, is this necklace yours? I said, no. The necklace is not mine. And I went home. Behold, when I woke up, I saw the necklace on my neck. The same necklace in the, in the bus was now hanging on her neck. Demonic. And then oh. since that day, she will pass out. Invisible hand will choke her, she will pass. Invisible hand. You, you don't go there and tell them, well, you get born again. As you get born again, you have all the spirit in it. No. In Mark chapter 16, we read it last time. He said, go. These signs shall follow them. Five supernatural signs. You shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You shall speak with new tongues. That's one of the supernatural signs God gave. And I, I couldn't tell that woman, you know what? I, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. I don't be, No, I, I've already prayed. We have already prayed in tongues. And God has edified us and equipped us. What we did, we stood there, laid hands on her, she fell. 
that was a baby demon, you know. Some demons I call baby demons. If the demons would take three or four hours, I used to say, take, take them to my wife. I go find the ones that take them. <laughs> <laughs> just take them to her, she'll deal with it. But you know what? So we just lay hands on that and boom, five minutes, the necklace broke off of her neck. We didn't touch the necklace. And she was completely set free. This happened five years ago. No more choking or anything. We saw her on this trip, completely set free. Why? It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why. That's why he said, you shall speak with new tongues and then you shall cast out demons. Why are we stripping the church? And this guy was arguing with himself on the telecast. He said, well, you know, I usually don't watch Christian television. I stopped doing that a long time ago. I was just looking through some clips, not on TV. I found him. He said, well, because I found a lot of followers. Well, you know, on the day of Pentecost, they spoke and then, you know, People understood it. Yes. Remember, we, we talked about the gifts of the Spirit, and we said there are three types of tongues. Remember that? The first tongue is the one you speak another language. Somebody can understand your language. The second tongue is the one, the prayer language. You speak in mystery. Sister Terry, read the read the first Corinthians 14:2. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians. Wow. Charity and desire spiritual gift. No, and first that, Corinthians 14 verse 2. 14 2. Yeah. But he speaking in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in a spirit you speak it mysteries. Okay. Stop that. Stop that. You see that? That they don't they don't see that. They just go to Acts and de- argue over one of the uh, tongues. That is one kind of tongues. When you speak, people hear you glorify God. That's one kind. But Acts 14 verse 2, he said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh mysteries. Mysteries. You know, read it again, verse, read it, Stateri. So everybody, I'm trying to address some of the questions I got. Yeah. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. But no man understanded him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Okay, you see that? You are speaking not unto man, but unto God. They don't see that. They just stick on the language people understand only as speaking in tongues. The Bible says you're speaking mysteries. You know what those mysteries are? They are divine secrets. They are divine secrets with God. And that is where we, we kick the devil because the devil doesn't understand it and the devil cannot interrupt it. He cannot interrupt it. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray in your language too. You should do both. It doesn't replace your praying in your understanding because the apostle Paul said, I will pray in the spirit. I will also pray with my understanding. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you pray in tongues, you are speaking mysteries. And the Bible said you are not speaking to man, you are speaking to God. And in that chapter, it says, he that prays in an unknown tongue, edifies himself. You are charging your spiritual batteries. So, let's look at something else before we move on. Dr. Cheko, just to confirm what you said, about yeah. the tongues of men and tongues of angels. Yeah. First Corinthians um, 13, verse 1, yeah. speaks about that. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men yeah. and of angels. So those are the two different types of tongues. Yes. Tongues of men, which we all understand, and the tongues of angels, which we don't. Means the interpretation. Thank you very much. That's a very good one. Now. Amen. Now, let's go to um, Acts 10. 10. I want you to read 44 through 46. And then after that, we just look at a few things on tongues. 
While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Okay, and that's it. That's it. You see that? Now, remember, Cornelius was a Gentile. And they had no relationship with the Jews until God showed Peter vision and told him to cut it, knock it off. And when Peter went, he was just telling them about salvation. And they were yeah. so hungry. You see, hunger is one of the critical elements to operating in the anointing of God. If you're hungry for the things of God, God will anoint you. The hunger in them drew down the power of the Holy Spirit. They didn't yeah. even know about speaking in tongues yet. But they were so hungry. I saw that in South Africa. <coughs> when a, a young man, I think I may have testified this to you. A young man was sitting in the witch doctor's living room when we got there. And he had uh, something swelling on his left leg, uh, knee. We prayed for him. God began to, to just fizzle that, that uh, swollen uh, knee. And the young man, before I could finish telling him about Christ, he began to speak in tongues. And the young man in Kenya who was drinking blood at night and blood would be over his tent, when the demons left him after several hours of casting that demon out, the next thing that happened, the young man began to speak in tongues. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what happened here. Salvation comes and then the desire for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In those days, we didn't know any better. I, the day I was baptized, I, I, I had a night vigil. In other words, I said, now, Lord, okay. Everybody thought I was baptized. I kept it secret. I will, I will lay on some people and pray for them. They will start speaking in tongues, but I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't baptized. I, I didn't tell anybody about it. They thought I was. So I, I got tired of this. I came back home. I said, Lord, it's now or never. Either you kill me or you baptize me. Choose one. I'm lucky. As the word says, you're lucky. God could have said, son, <laughs> we can arrange it. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I kill you right now. You are great thing. I'll kill you. <laughs> but, but he didn't. <laughs> he, he knew I was. He knew I was desperate for him. He knew I wanted him so badly. I said, "Oh God, you kill me or you baptize me, kill me." That was my prayer. <laughs> After praying that, wow. I, yeah, and I decided I was not going to sleep from eight o'clock when I, when I would sit down. When I got tired, I would stand up. When I got tired standing up, I would sit. When I sat, I kept. I said, I said, this is my night. You gotta kill me or baptize me. And about 4 a.m., I started this thing at 10, 10 p.m. I was a determined young man that time. 4 a.m., boom. That was a Russian mighty call way. that Tarian, Dr. Tekwa. Uh, uh? They used to call that Tarian. <laughs> yes, Tarian, yes. That's what it is. And before I knew it, I was bubbling with joy and uh, just, I said, yeah. After a while, I said, you know what? That prayer, he could have came. He could have said, son, okay, let's arrange it. <laughs> Go <Wow>. outside. <laughs> Go outside and lie down. I'll just take it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but he knew, <laughs> he knew the desires of my heart. Yeah. But now, when I now realize, many years later, that you don't have to tarry. That they tarried on the day of Pentecost, the spirit came down. Now the spirit is here. All you just need to do is pray and take the gift and believe it. And it's going to baptize you. As simple as that. I commend everybody on this line. Everybody. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, that is the most important thing in your life. All those things you're praying for are important. They are not as important as this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because God would energize your work with him. God will charge your spiritual batteries. When you mm. pray in tongues in the Holy Spirit, you're praying mysteries, you're bypassing your mind, you're praying directly to God, and you're having a discussion and conversation. And many a time, when you find yourself praying,
praying in this. And I remember when I escaped being beheaded in uh, the Muslim part of Nigeria. He was praying in the spirit, praying in tongues for several hours. And then after praying in tongues for several hours, the spirit began to give me visions. I began to see visions of myself being separated. And every time I had got in this, the other trip I told you were, we finished ministering to pastor's conference who were coming down in a country. And there was a checkpoint, there were several checkpoints. And then before this checkpoint, I began to speak in tongues. I told my driver, I said, look here, I don't like that checkpoint we're approaching. He said, there's nothing. I said, I know, but the spirit is talking me. After praying, I just, it just came from nowhere. I started praying in tongues. I said, slow down. He did slow down. Four o'clock in the afternoon. It was, um, they were armed robbers. They were not police. Mm. We, could have, we could have walked into the lion's den. And we turned around. Why? Because when you pray mysteries, your spirit, the Holy Spirit is praying the mind of God through you. Amen. Speak at mystery. Uh, I had a testimony from a preacher who said uh, his uh, father-in-law was a skeptic, but, but he wanted to make sure. And he went with his friend to a Holy Ghost revival meeting. And then they knew a neighbor. His neighbor was a very honest and decent man but was not born again. So his father-in-law said, if this neighbor gets these tongues, then they know that it's real. So they both went and the neighbor got saved and got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he started speaking in tongues. So his friend asked his father-in-law, he said, what is he talking about? The father-in-law said, I don't know. He's not, he's not talking to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's not talking to me. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Of course, it's not talking to him, it's speaking mysteries to God. Amen. It's the conversation we have with God. I'm telling you, when when you get it, oh my, uh, the joy and yes. the, the refreshing that it gives you when you have uh, issues and uh, challenges of life, you, I mean, you cannot, you cannot replace it. So have we said all this to answer? Somebody saying something? Okay, I haven't said this to answer some of those questions. I hope everybody now understands that we need this, the baptism of the Holy Ghost after salvation. Now, what are some of the other reasons why we need it? Number one reason we need it, we already talked about it, right? It's Acts 2 verse 4. In Acts 2 verse 4, we know that speaking in tongues is initial evidence of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We saw it in, in uh, Acts 10. Cornelius. By the way, Cornelius happened 10 years after Pentecost. And we also saw it in Acts 19 verses 1 through 6. There's a lot of power in the Holy Spirit. It flows through our lives and to every other area of our life. You know, if you've not been baptized, again, I challenge you and encourage you. Tonight, we will agree with you. And now you begin to speak with the Holy Spirit. Now, tongues also shows that we are in direct relationship with God. For he says, verse 2 that Terry read, he said, for he that speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak unto men, but speaks what? Mysteries, so that nobody understands him. That's mysteries. Those mysteries bring us in direct relationship, in direct contact with God. Because now you're bypassing your mind and the devil cannot interrupt it because he doesn't understand what you're praying. So it's important to remember that. But it doesn't mean that we have to replace our praying in our language. We have to do both. We have to do both. I want to tell you, one of the ways, the most powerful way to speak to God, to have communication with God, is praying in the Spirit. Why? Because we, we saw it in verse 2, divine secrets 
are revealed unto us. We are praying divine secrets that no one else understands except the Lord. And that is a very important life that we live if we do that. It takes you out of the natural to the supernatural. What a better way to communicate with God. Your mind gets out of the natural and you are in the supernatural. Another reason why we need to do that is that the Holy Spirit of God in Westerly, I want you to read John chapter 14. Which verse? Uh, 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither know it him, but ye know him, but he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. The spirit indwells you. The spirit indwells me. It reminds me of the presence of the spirit in my life. So that when all these noises are going about, people are talking rubbish and all that, I, I get comfort or comforted because I have that indwelling presence. Remember when the Holy Spirit is the one that, that bears witness that you are, you are a child of God. And now you know that he indwells you when you speak because you're really not speaking of your own power. That's an assurance of the indwelling presence of God in you. It, it, we shouldn't take this lightly because you realize in the Old Testament, it was meant for the priests, it was meant for the prophets and kings only, select few. But now... We have an indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in us. And also, one of the other reasons why we need to speak in tongues is one of my favorite ones. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. Stateri. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. Church, can I can I advise you? Some of you, a lot of you already know this. Anytime your spiritual battery is going low, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. Yes. Pray in tongues. I'm telling you, pray in tongues. Your battery is plugged in when you do. Whenever your faith is slow, whenever you feel like you're on the brink of getting discouraged, and pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Because your spiritual battery will be charged. I, I also say this. You are going to be, have more highs than lows when you make it a habit of praying in the spirit. It says you edify yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's take it to the vehicle. You have a vehicle, and that vehicle is parked for a long time. And let's say winter comes. Sometimes you see some snow in some places. You go crank the battery. Maybe, maybe you had a brand new battery, but when you crank it, it doesn't start. What happens? The battery is slow. Maybe the cold air winter has gone and messed the battery up. And what do you need? You need a booster. The booster is really hot, powerful, and you put it. That's what the edification means in the life of a believer. But if, if that car had been packed and you take the initiative every other day to just start it and let it run for a couple of minutes a day, the battery will never go down when things come. Why? You've already been charging the battery. Every two days, you just go crank the car. Every other day or so, you crank the car. And when the cold comes, you haven't driven it. The battery will not go down. Why? The battery will always be charged. Why? Because you've been cranking it. Even though you haven't been driving it. That's exactly what happens. When you edify and speak and pray in tongues, you are cranking your spiritual battery every time you do that. 
and it's hard for you to get cold and low for long when you're cranking your spiritual battery, you're edifying it. So that's, that's one of the importance of that. And we need to do that. Now, one other thing is Romans 8.26. Can you read it? Yep, 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities, but we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, you see that? The Holy Spirit will help you gain the strength in any area where you are weak. In any area where we are weak. Now, let me just say this. Jesus depended on him. So much so. Can you imagine that? Jesus depended on him. The Bible said he was full of the Holy Ghost. He went into the wilderness and fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He depended on the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? Jesus allowed the Spirit of God to lead him. And he depended on him 100%. And if you are weak in any area, the more you spend time praying in the spirit, the stronger your weaker areas will become. Yeah. He depended on him. He went through the Garden of Gethsemane. People talk about the cross. No, the victory was won in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's why the victory. Yeah. Even though know, we knew that the Bible says, it's a mystery because he was slain before the foundation of the world. You go explain that to me theologically. Before the world was even built, he was slain, the Bible says. But at the Garden of Gethsemane, he went through a battle and sweated blood and said, Oh God, let this cup pass from me. If that cup had passed from him, we would have been done. We would have been miserable. We would not have had any hope. But he turned around. That was not the end of the prayer. He said, not my will be done, but thy will. The Spirit of God strengthened him. So closer relationship with him comes the more we pray in the Spirit. All right? The other reason why I believe we should is we are praying. Um, Sister Terry, verse Romans 8.27. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you, I know everybody has experienced this. Has there been a time when you go into the presence of God, you don't even know what to pray for? I mean, are you, you are lost for what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. The spirit then comes and takes over with strange groanings. The Bible says, it says the spirit prays according to the will of God. He prays in accordance with God's will. And when he does that, victory comes. Yes. We praise God because the spirit always knows a time of uncertainty in our prayer can become a very powerful time. When we do, we are taking what the Holy Spirit is giving us. He gives us utterance, the Bible says. He gives us utterance. And that utterance is in the perfect will of God. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this time, we are not praying in the flesh. We are praying the perfect will of God. Now, I might add one thing too to it. If you are in a place where there are challenges or difficulties. Maybe somebody is crippled or something or have, um, what is that, epileptic seizure. Those things are tough. Those things are tough, stubborn spirits. Yeah. When you pray in tongues and fast with it, God will equip you to the extent of being able to destroy those demonic, demonic forces yes. in just a, mat a matter of time. When you fast and pray in the spirit, I think the next thing I will take up here may probably be prayer and fasting. When you fast and pray in the spirit, you have a 
supernatural combo. I am telling you, we know when we talked about the gifts of the Spirit, we talked about the gift of faith. And we say that the gift of faith comes upon us for a reason and for a season. That is faith to believe God for the impossible. It's not the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But one of the things that really facilitates that kind of faith is fasting and praying in the spirit. Those two combos, you can beat them. Try it. You can be, you know what? I, I would be on a crusade ground. Who, who am I? Just flesh? I mean, just without that spirit, I can't even cast uh, a, a fly out of the eye of a cat. I can't. I can't even take care of myself. But guess what happens? I can stand on the crusade ground and look at somebody's face, a tumor, or look at somebody they are kind on a stretcher, and there's a strong supernatural faith that is inside of me. I can say, put her down and get up in Jesus. You tell people something you know in the natural is impossible. You tell them to do it and they do it. God heals them. Amen. It comes by praying in tongues and adding fasting to it. All right? Now, I'm going to give us one more and then we, we close. Now, we talked about those mysteries that we pray. And the reason why they are called mysteries is because we don't understand it, but God does. One of the other things that I find very helpful is, I think I, we covered it when we talked about the, the, um, the, the spiritual gifts, is there is a refreshing. Sister Terry, read the First Thessalonians 5.23. And I'm going to close with that. Verse 3. No, verse 23. Verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You need what? We need, there are times we need physical, emotional rest. There are times we need physical, emotional, and spiritual rest. We need time of resting and refreshing to be effective. And praying in tongues gives you that refreshing. Sometimes the doctors will tell you, hey, take a break, rest for certain ailments you're going through. When we overwork and we are stressful, it can take a toll on us. But a time without continued spiritual refreshing will do the same. When we don't do it, they are, you know, we keep going and going and going. It will take the pressure off of us when we need an answer. Yes. But to be refreshed, we pray in the spirit and we receive what the Lord has for us. I find it very, look, when I go, when I came back, even though it was like 18 hours flight and all that, apart from the fatigue in the flesh, I was refreshed because I, this places we go, are where I spend in my hotel room, and I'm just having ball with the Lord, praying in tongues more often than praying in my language. And there's a refreshing that comes. And there is peace that comes. And there is, what, can you, what else can you have that will do you much good than the Spirit of God in you, just charging your battery and giving you directions and touching people it gives you a refreshing. So we need a refreshing. We need, I don't know what unbelievers do. That's why you have a lot of spirit of suicide there. We need a refreshing. And that refreshing will come when we pray in tongues. When we pray in tongues. All right. Finally, I said finally before, I left one up. Is tongues would do what? Would charge our faith. It will charge our faith. It will, it will 
we, we, we talked about it last time, right? It will stimulate our faith. That was Jude 20. Read it. Read it. Jude 20. 